I'm a great advocate of Russell T. Davis' work, and I think the present incarnation of the doctor in Shutigatwa is sensational. I think he's a tremendous performer. The first two episodes were spectacular. The last two episodes have been a little bit lacklustre, but significantly better than what we have become used to in the last couple of years. Um, and, and and I think it's worth just doing a sort of uh, quick look back at what is Doctor Who. First of all, I find it, I, I remember I had, a, I had a bit of a sort of discussion with Philip Pullman a long time ago on the pages of uh, of the tele Telegraph, among other places, uh, about the use of the Oxford comma and Doctor Who. Doctor Who comes from the nineteen sixties. You, you'd expect to see an exclamation mark after it, wouldn't you? Like Sir Oliver, twang, blitz. Those are all. Those are all musicals. Oddly, by the same person, Lionel Bart. He loved an exclamation mark. Doctor Who. Almost, you'd expect a, a question mark in the first Doctor Who of the Shuti Gatwa series. Uh, the reboot, he tries to explain who Doctor Who is and that it's just a title and how people on Gallifrey, Time Lords, don't have conventional names. They have these titles, the Master, the Doctor, and so on. And uh, the, the premise of Doctor Who, I suppose, goes back to some, something, something like 1895 and the H.G. Wells book, The Time Machine. Um, and, and it's the same principle that you see in the 1980s, Back to the Future, uh, that, that point where the doc says, well, you're, you're not thinking in the fourth dimension. Well, um, that, that's, that's, that's already there in H.G. Wells. Not quite correct mathematically. The fourth dimension is not exactly time. Uh, but H.G. Wells dramatized it as such. In H.G. Wells, there's a scene where Philby is talking. For, um, he says, Clearly, the time traveler says uh, any real body must have extension in four directions. It must have length, breadth, thickness, and duration. And so time becomes a sort of a quick, uh, a quick fix, fourth dimension. Um, I mean, if you think of the hypercube and all this sort of stuff in physics, it's not, as I say, it's not quite the same thing. And the hypercube, as you turn it in space, it's not quite consistent. It's, it's not a box within a box. It's a box which sort of etiolates and it, it sort of, it, 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 it's difficult to, Im we can't imagine it because we are not creatures of a fourth dimension in that sense. We are creatures who move through time. So mathematically we can do it, conceptually we can do it, but we can't actually represent it in in 3D. Disney tried it. Uh, so the Disney idea, picking up from H.G. Wells, length, breadth, thickness, and duration, is animated film, isn't it? When a cartoon is walking and moving, and you believe it has life, that is drawings in duration. And the, and the art of animation, particularly the art of drawn animation, which is what I do, is about drawing in time. And I, I also like to think it's about drawing in depth as well, in, in the Z-axis, or as Americans say, the Z-axis, um, which is much harder. So as you, as you move, your, 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 your arm sort of, your, your hand becomes bigger as it as it move as it gets closer to the camera as it moves away it's smaller and and is thinking in those broad arcs but also thinking in time uh, and you remember that scene at the end of back to the future i think back to the future three where the railway bridge is there and and marty says well the bridge isn't um isn't, isn't built uh, and the the um the, the car the delorean has to accelerate to 88 miles per hour um towards a billboard that that won't be in the way in 1884 and uh, and and towards a um a bridge that hasn't been built in 1885 um and it's 
it, it's thrilling as he goes down that, uh, or so across that unfinished bridge that will be quite safe and will be there in 1985. Um, of course, it's not true that 1895 and H.G. Wells was the first time travel novel. The first time travel novel really was Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol, where the ghost of Christmas past takes, Dick, takes Scrooge to the past. That is time travel. And time travel is a way, it's a novelistic way, a fictional way to get characters from one environment to another, uh, a contrast of societies, a contrast of time, to get them to revisit their past or whatever. And time travel was integral to the plot of Back to the Future. It's integral to the plot of A Christmas Carol. And it's integral to Doctor Who. But in Doctor Who, it's about passing through. Uh, a time is just a different location. Um, and he travels, the Doctor travels in a machine that specifically recognizes the link between time and space, the TARDIS. Um, so it, the TARDIS is an updated time machine from the Wells plot device, and um, it, it, its spatial confusion is a nice uh, nod, of course, to the hypercube. And um, I, I, I actually, in terms of all that space and time stuff, you know, you've got you've got the Edwin A. Abbott story which anticipates Wells by about 10 years where he's talking about flatland um, and, the, and the twilight zone as well also plays around with time um, and, and of course Star Trek plays around with time so you've got plenty of, uh, of, of opportunities but it's not just novels and fiction that play around with time and space it's also art that plays around with time and space and I find the art of the Byzantine art, particularly, is so interesting. Where you can have two, where you can have a character in two places at the same time, and uh, and and that is time travel as well. Um, the the conventions of the, the visual conventions of the of Byzantine art uh, go back certainly to seventy A.D. Pompeii. Where, where you've got an understanding of linear perspective, but it's often resisted in favor of the inverted perspective, which is then such a celebrated concept of Byzantine religious art. Um, and the, 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 that art, which is celebrated in the 7th and the 8th century, particularly by people like um, John of Damascus, um, as in medieval art, Byzantine art, um, the medieval art that, for example, Disney copies in Sleeping Beauty, the, the medieval art is dominated by uh, the, the the Byzantine art is dominated by these vertical lines. Um, so we, in Disney, there's a fellow called um, Irvin Earl who designed Sleeping Beauty in the 1950s, but he was basing his work on Albrecht Dürer, Pieter Bruegel, Nicholas van Eyck, Sandro Botticelli, as well as Persian art and Japanese prints. And, uh, but, but he was also drawing on the Byzantine form um, and, uh, and, and his vision completely dominates the film. W what he doesn't use is inverted perspective. So inverted perspective, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a little drawing um, uh, which, 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 which might help. So, so this, is, this is the traditional linear perspective. So if you stand in front of a line of trees and you look beyond those trees, those trees seem to recede and vanish at a particular vanishing point. If, on the other hand, you stand in front of an icon, the vanishing point is behind you. And so you are part of that picture. You are in that picture. And so although it looks rather peculiar, you're not observing the picture from outside. You are participating in the picture from inside. And, uh, and, and so we're approaching 
religious art really rather like a mathematician uh, looking back into the fourth or the fifth dimension trying to understand the hypercube and uh, and I think particularly on a Sunday it's like it's like truly trying to participate in a godlike view and I think this is probably one of the most exciting inventions of modern art and it goes back to the seventh or the eighth century uh, and and it is of course this tool which gives us cubism the idea of having two things in, in, in one place uh, the idea of changing your perspective the idea of moving through time um, and it's a sort of uh, so, so, so it's not just religion. It's also this, 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 this fantasy of physics as well, and and you get all that from Doctor Who. But I, I love the fact that in the Doctor Who episode two of this current series, uh, the Doctor and the companion go 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 into the TARDIS, which of course is infinite. Go into the TARDIS to get dressed up, and they come out of a of a different door uh, higher up um, and, and, and it's it happens simultaneously from our point of view and I think again that's a lovely a lovely idea that time within the TARDIS itself seems to be ambivalent which is how it should be and you've got these different layers of perspective within the TARDIS I, I, I think that's that's a wonderful idea, and the fact that the TARDIS itself can change with its inhabitant. So, yeah, I, I, as I, I love what Russell T. Davis has done to Doctor Who, but I, but I love the original concepts of Doctor Who as they have developed. And, uh, and although this is a clearly a children's program, it's also a program that has justifiably earned a reputation for um, thought, thoughtful production and clever scripting. A uh, lot long, long may it continue. And I, I hope subsequent episodes will be um, more engaging. Um, I, I liked last week actually, though it was a little dry. But this week I found was a bit beyond me. Um, may, may, maybe somebody's going to come come up and.